for entrepreneurs. I'm your host, June Middleton. I have a really very special, skilled, and talented guest on the show this evening, Richard Fezziali. He is an award-winning producer, broadcaster, and blogger who, he says, has lived in Manhattan forever. <laughs> a former network news editor, Fezzi Ali is the host of the long-running DVTV Live on cable. He scripted and edited the documentary film Burma, an Indictment, an award-winning documentary that uh, for the 2010 International Film Festival. It was quite an accomplishment. He currently teaches video production and conducts seminars in media, history, and media literacy. I am pleased, really pleased, to have as my guest and delighted to introduce to you Richard Speziali. Rich, thank you. thank you so much well, for being so much. the show uh, and being my be guest. Oh, this is such a delight. I, I've wanted for a while to do this. I really have. And finally, it mm -hmm. happened. What I want to talk to you about mm -hmm. is, well, you know, this is a show for entrepreneurs. Right. And I want to talk to you about the business of editing. But mm -hmm. before we get to that, I want to talk to you, okay. Rich. Who is Rich Speciali? Well, who am I? Oh, no. You just read the, the little short bio, but I'm, I'm a guy who's occasionally mad, mad as hell and doesn't want to <laughs> take it anymore. Sometimes I shake my fist and uh, bellow a bit, and I've been known to do that in this studio. Um, and on your show. And on well, my show, we're yes. We're going to yeah. hear more about well, that. Well, that, that, that's an excuse to do it. Sometimes I just <laughs> do it in the studio when I, when I feel like it. But yes, on my show, I've been known to do that. And um, I, I'm a person who who sees injustice and has to say something about it. And that's been the thrust of most of my, most of my creative endeavors, and most of the reason mm -hmm. why I do a cable show, uh, and most of the reason why I've been involved with news editing news and documentaries. And so yeah, that's I want to get, thrust. I want to get into that more, because I know you were a news editor at CNN. I was at, at CNN. I was freelance at CNN. I was also at a, uh, I was at ABC for, for about six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was like really, um, um, I wasn't the, the finesse news editors that they had upstairs. I was one of the guys in the basement, one of the people <laughs> in the basement, it wasn't exclusively guys, can't make it a sexist club, but one of the people in the basement who uh, really worked on things that were um, very close to air. There wasn't time to finesse it upstairs. So literally, you know, sometimes I would get a piece to edit three minutes before it had to go on the air. Oh my gosh. And there'd be, well, at least at CNN, which at that time, this was, this was quite a few years ago. Um, at that time, CNN was in Penn Plaza. They didn't have this building over here on 58th Street. And uh, they were more like the New York Bureau of CNN, that mm -hmm. they were very small. But you would delve Like New one York One is now? Yes, th like that, in that, you know, I mean, they covered the United Nations and events in New York. So you weren't covering a, a lot of other stuff. And like I say, the equipment was small, the facility was small. And literally, there were a lot of times where I'd be in an editing booth, editing a piece with literally a production assistant with his or her arm leaning into the booth, going like waiting this. Waiting for the copy? Waiting for, waiting for me to eject the tape, <gasps> slap it into their hand, and they dash they down the up. hall. Oh my gosh. So that, that's where I really learned to be um, to make decisions fast. I learned editing as a creative medium. I learned, I learned it's an art school. So I created- Well, it I is an art form. Oh, it is it? an art form. It is a craft, absolutely. But um, I learned to do it uh, to make really quick decisions because there was no time. Mm -hmm. There was no, there's no time to think. There's no time. Sometimes there's no, t if you have three minutes to air, you don't have time to watch the footage. Sounds like a total contradiction, but people who have That's to edit scary. like that. It is scary, but mm. if you have to edit like that, you, you log the footage in your head by, while watching and fast forward. Mm. There's the close up, there's an establishing shot. That doesn't look too shaky. Hopefully this is a good take of the interview. And with the aid of the reporter who, who was on the scene and mm -hmm. did it, 
you throw something together. And it's not, it doesn't leave a lot of room for creativity. It doesn't leave any room for second thought. But, but you have to have the skill to do you it. You have to have the skill and you have to have the judgment and it's basic building blocks, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You know you're mm -hmm. not going to make a fancy piece, but you have to still tell a story. You have to make people care about it and you have to give, you know, it's news. Who, why, when, what, and where, and why, why is the part. Yeah. Why well, part. how did you get started in this industry? I mean, because really you worked on say. video and film right. and full length and... Well, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I had all kinds of creative urges and things I, di I did when, it was when I was a kid, mainly working with film and audio. When I was a kid, and you know, it's in the dark ages, um, <laughs> they, uh, you know, the, the video wasn't that common. I mean, there was plenty of video around, but it wasn't affordable and it wasn't something you could buy for your kid. Mm. So. Like you can today. Like you can today. I mean, <laughs> everything has video in it. Phones, uh, my last phone had video editing software. That's and it was incredible. not an expensive phone, but yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, professionally, when I got started, things were a lot different than they are today. It, it, it's, it's weird. I was thinking about doing the show before, and I'm thinking editing got a lot simpler, but a lot more complicated. Let me explain that. Yeah, please, because, yeah. I mean, there's so much editing software that's available right, at this right. point. Uh, well, for any when, kind I started, of computer. when I started, I had, there was no editing software, or very, very little. It was pretty much still in the experimental stage and very expensive. So when I started, you had to know a great deal about the video signal and how to control a beast that was a big reel-to-reel -reel videotape recorder. Mm, mm -hmm. So you had to know how to read a waveform monitor and a vector scope, and you had to know a lot of technical things, how to adjust your horizontal phase, where the front porch or the back porch was, a lot of technical stuff. All of that, now that video is digital, it's out the window. You don't have to worry about it anymore. The job is all done for you. So in that way, it's become simpler. But when I started, editing was pretty much a specialty. If, if you were an editor, you were not expected to do a lot of other jobs. But today, and I say this to all our potential entrepreneurs out there, especially people getting started, um, the people who are editors and purely editors are really working on higher budget projects, feature films, um, advertising agencies, Madison Avenue type. Commercials. Commercials, but big budget commercials. If you want to get started, what do you any call big budget? What do you consider big oh, budget? Oh, I, I wouldn't want to give it numbers, millions? but um, you know, for a thirty-second spot, I'd say I'd say half a million mm. minimum. Now, you know, there's all different levels, but if you're start just starting out, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be on the lower levels, working on the lower budget stuff. Well, so what, how did, what, what was it for you when mm -hmm. you first started out? What did you first start doing? I mean, you did. You said you studied some in school. Studied some in school, yeah. And, and I was doing animation in school. As a kid, I edited. Um, I edited audio tape together with a razor blade. I found my fa was my that father splicing. Splicing, yes. Literally taking, you know, cutting up audio tape, taping it together, and then and that's how you physically edited. So it's a very pure way of editing. And it's the same way film used to be edited. You take strips of film, cut them apart, and paste them together and run them through, through a projector. That's interesting, because I, I noticed on the Final Cut Pro uh, software, mm -hmm. there's a little symbol uh, for a razor blade. Razor blade, And I yes. tried to figure out, well, why a razor blade? <laughs> it, it just but makes a simple cut on the timeline. I mean, So that comes from the splicing era. When I first, yes, yes. I mean, it, it represents a cut. And the first thing, w before I knew, before I hacked my way into Final Cut, hacked my way by me, you know, I didn't know how to do it. I never got any lessons, so I had to like really just open it up and try cutting. And the first thing, oh, there's a razor blade there. Well, I can make a cut. That was the first thing that I did. Mm -hmm. But actually, you know, I used to, back when I was a kid, used to still um, edit tape together, literally with a razor blade. So now the software is out. I consider, you know, I have I have an Apple at home, and I have a dual monitor, and I have Final Cut Pro, and I have all these tools within there, but to me, it's just a fancier razor blade. Mm. The creative mm -hmm. process is the same, and the creative process is the same. I just have a lot more options, but and it's still the judgment. A simpler huh? way to do it? 
Well, uh, it's simpler and more complicated. I think I started saying this before. I, I, I mean it's more complicated today because, well, you're, uh, if you're starting out, uh, if you want to get anywhere in the television um, advertising business, um, even, even online, well, you're not expect if you want to be an editor, you are expected to write, plan, produce, shoot the piece, do the audio on the piece, edit it all together, add the titles, add the music, do the special effects. By yourself? Put it on the web and build a web page around it. Yes, by yourself. Now, this sounds like a master of all trades, and it is. Does the software allow you to? Of course. The reason, the reason people are expected to do this was it is now because all the software can come in one package or it can all fit in a computer. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the most important thing, it's possible to do it on a computer. Um, 10, 15, 20 years ago, most of that stuff required tape machines with spinning reels and separate pieces of equipment. Now, a computer, of a piece of software, a digital piece of software, can emulate all that equipment, and at the same time, give you, because of the processing power, give you many more options that you didn't have when this Incredible. was all in analog. Well, I, I have a, an old Grundig mm. tape to tape, reel to reel mm -hmm. uh, recorder, and I know that when I was doing some recording on it, I mean, all I could do was just, you know, have an actual microphone right. and someone would talk to the microphone and I'd run the tape, but then after that, I'd have to turn it over to someone else mm -hmm. to get it edited. So, right. But I mean, there's no such thing like that anymore, is there? There is no such thing anymore. I mean, yeah, I was, pa I was passing by a, um, a stereo store in, uh, on Broadway that had high-end stereos and some vintage stereo stuff, and you know, I'm looking at all the stuff, oh, that's a beautiful old reel-to-reel, -reel. I'd love to have that, wow. That's two thousand dollars. I wish I could afford that. And suddenly, in the back of my mind, it, something said, "You don't need, need this. It. You have all of this in your computer now. It, it's not, you know, none of it, it's it's nice to look at and everything, but it's not really necessary. Yes, I can be an analog purist. There is a difference between analog and dig digital, especially well, I know the in analog, sound. The analog, the signal sort of goes just a wavy. Yeah. Here and with the digital, it's sort it's of... It's a mathematical formula, yeah. you know, which, which uh, they can get a very sophisticated mathematical formula to make a very sophisticated curve. Mm -hmm. But still, analog is infinite and digital is finite because it's going to certain numerical coordinates. Mm -hmm. It's still a mathematical formula. I mean, this is like having a landline as opposed to uh, a cell phone. Right, right. But yet, the cell phone gives you a hell of a lot more options that you didn't have in the landline. So, and the cell phone might have a camera in it and a voice memo and a calendar and a schedule and you get the internet and, and you can edit video on it. Well, how many, how many years was it that you were, do you remember what your first editing job was? Um, uh, 